Spirit, living God, as I speak, may you increase and I decrease. May the word you have given me for this message be seed which rests upon our hearts, that we might bear fruit for you here on earth. May I speak boldly and courageously that which you've given me to speak. And may we, as your people, have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's make that a heaping spoonful of ice cream. Any of you understand what heaping means? It means don't just measure the spoon, but let's get that where we get two spoonfuls into one spoonful, and that's the way I like to eat my ice cream. I like it heaped up. I like my cereal not level with the bowl. I like it heaped up. I like my plate heaped up. How many of the rest of y'all are heaping kind of people that like your stuff heaped up? I like my cash flow heaped up. Right? I like my family heaped up. I like all the good things in life heaped up. That's what we're talking about today in Scripture is do we understand how much God loves us but we have to understand God loves us with a heaping amount of love. God doesn't just put things into a box, scrape off the top, and say, this is how much love you get. God does it like this. Say you're going to buy a pound of grain in ancient times. They would pour that into the pound box, and they would heap it up, and they would invite you. God would invite you to stick your apron out, and God would wipe the heapings into your apron. And you could carry those home with you so that you could be pressed down, shaken up, and rolled over into your apron so that you have more than enough. How many of us live life just like that? That everything is heaped up, that all the grace we extend people is heaped up. All the mercy we extend people is heaped up. All the love we extend people is heaped up. Patrick Morley says in his book, Details to Life, he tells a story about two people named Brian and Sherry, and I can relate. 20 years into marriage, and I hope you can relate, 20 years of being in love and being in marriage, they found themselves in the pastor's office, struggling, because they didn't know what heaped up meant. They didn't know what it meant to press down, shake it down, and heap it over the top. Because they lived the love that has been modeled for them in their lives, just like the rest of us, they had then modeled a reciprocating love. You know what that means? If I scratch your back, you can scratch my back. If I do a good deed for you, you can do a good deed for me. If I take care of you and provide for you, you'll take care of me and provide for me. And too many of us in this world think that that's what loving one another is all about. Is we only give because we want to be able to be given back to. We only help because we expect people to help us. We, we do everything expecting something in return. God doesn't do that. God doesn't love like that. And that's what Jesus is saying in his sermon today. He's still preaching on that level ground, and this is the meat of the sermon. And he's talking to us, and he's saying, here's what you need to understand. This is the truth of what Gene, Eugene Peterson says in the, in the message. He says, let's get ready for the, And now those of you who want to know the truth, that's what he says. Those of you who want to know the truth about God's mercy, this is what it looks like. And he gets into the meat of the sermon on the level place in Luke. And he talks about what God's love looks like versus what our love looks like. How many of you have ever judged somebody? You don't have to. Because I know. How many people are in here, right? How many of you ever condemned somebody? How many of you given and you charged people interest on what you gave? How many of you don't have somebody right now you can't forgive? Have you been forgiven? Have you been given? Have you been judged yet? Have you been condemned? That's what the text is saying today is we need to pay attention who we as people of God are and what we do in our life. Do we live from our own understanding from that age-old rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I would hate to live in the world if we did unto one another as we do unto one another. We are a mean, cruel people. And I 
speak about the population in general. Humanity is a mean, cruel humanity. We treat each other horribly. Just this week, I was in a crowd in a, in, a, in a place, and there were people from all nations and all walks of life, and I was shocked to see the indifference some people had for other people. And yes, that sounds like I'm judging somebody, but I was just being aware of what was going on in the crowd. The color of skin made a difference. The country from which they were from made a difference. The school from which they were from made a difference. The event they were participating in made a difference. When it all should be on a level play, when we gather as God's humanity, humanity, when we engage one another as God's humanity, why do we judge people? Why do we try to put ourselves on a place that's better than somebody else when we're not? God created us all equal. Male and female alike we were created, breathed spirit into us. And told we were very good. And it went for every bit of humanity. And Jesus is preaching from the level place. Saying understand this. This is countercultural. Even in Jesus' time. It was a reciprocal counter. It was a reciprocal culture. If you did it for me. I would do it for you. And we raise people like that. Up through the culture. And up through our society. That we expect something back in return. What does God expect from us? If you believe and accept, you will live forever. Doesn't say you have to be first place, dean's on a roll, have the highest degree, serve in the highest position. It says if you believe in the sacrifice through Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, you will be in eternity with God. That's what it says. God doesn't say you have to be the best. God doesn't say you have to have a perfect marriage. 3.5 kids. Kids that all have college degrees. Live in the best houses. Live and drive the best cars. God says you have to be genuine in who you are. And extend mercy to other people like it has been extended to you. Do you know how hard that is for us? Brian and Sherry were in a place after 20 years of marriage. They fell in love in high school. They got married shortly after that. Then they had their family. And 20 years into the marriage, they're struggling because they're looking at each other and saying, you did this to me, so I'm offended. Now I'm going to do this to you. You see, our love does this with one another when we do that. We don't love anymore. We judge. We condemn. We hold grudges. We forget how to forgive. And we try to call ourselves Christians. But fortunately, we have a God who offers grace to us. A God who accepts us right where we are. I, want to, I, I need to know this. When you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, did everybody tell you you had to get your life right before you could do that? Did you have a checklist that said, I have to be this, 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 and this before I can do that? I don't think anybody did that, did they? They said, all you have to do is say, God, I need you. And I understand the promise that you've given me. And I accept that promise to love me just as I am. And God loves us that way. And God continues to love us that way. But what God expects from us, as Jesus says in his sermon today, is that he expects us to love others like we have been loved. Do unto others as you have done been, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Right, what do we call that? The golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, I never thought that was Jesus' words when I was growing up. I thought that was my mama's. <laughs> you know, I pulled out a quote today. It was so fun. I mean, this week I got to pick the kindness quote that went in the newsletter. And I saw the author of that quote, and I just couldn't wait to print it. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Jesus, written in red. If you know in the newsletter, it's still in red. 
Because it's Jesus who says to us that we're to love others as we would have them love us. Now, I want you to think about that in your life. It's what Patrick Morley char charged Brian and Sherry with. That I want you to read the script of the acts you're about to perform before you perform them. Even in saying good morning, he challenged them. And he said to them, do you want to be loved like that? With whatever you're fixing to do, whatever you're fixing to say, whatever's about to come out of your mouth or the actions of your body to those that you're encountering, you need to read the script. Before it ever comes out, read the script. Is it going to hurt somebody? Is it going to place you above somebody? Is it going to judge somebody? Is it going to condemn somebody? Or is it going to love somebody? The way you want to be loved. Every word out of our mouths should be words we want to hear back. Every action from our body should be actions that we want to receive back. Everything we do in our communities are things we would want to be done to us. Every time we encounter friends, we should treat our friends like we want to be treated. Every time we encounter a stranger, every time we encounter a stranger, we should treat that stranger like we want to be treated. I was walking amidst the crowd. And I looked up and I had on a gray vest that I wear and my sleeves were burnt away. And walking my way was coming this six foot five stud. I mean, he was a stud. And he was walking and he was walking. And I don't know if my burnt orange caught his eye because he was wearing that beautiful color also. But we locked eyes on one another. And I don't know him and he doesn't know me. And he said these words. Good morning, sir. I knew who he was. And it wasn't my son. I said, good morning, Alex. And he said, how are you today? I said, I'm fine, how are you? And he said, I'm good, thank you. Now those were two strangers who found a common ground in the color of clothes that we were wearing and where our loyalty fly. But we greeted one another as we wanted to be greeted throughout that day. This is a kid who's fixing to go step on a track and run for a championship, and he takes time enough to greet an old man who happens to be wearing the same kind of color and rooting for the same university he does that he doesn't know from Adam. But he greets him with kindness and respect. And in return, I greeted him with kindness and respect. Do you see what I'm saying? When we walk through our lives, it doesn't have to be a beggar on the street. It's the common man or common woman that we encounter every day in our lives that Jesus asks us to make a difference. <clears throat> that made a difference. I hold that kid in higher regard now because of the way he treated me. Because he understands what it means to love somebody as he wants to be loved. To respect what it is in a human being when you look them eye to eye and you make contact and you see God in them just like the God that's in you. I've also had an encounter this week that was a little heated. And things came out of my mouth that I wish I would have never said. And you can't take those back. And I'm sure the person who I said those to is struggling to forgive me, even though I've asked for forgiveness. You see, we have a choice every day how we love one another. And there's nothing more that the world needs than what Stephen just sang about, and that's love. But love isn't shaped in a little red heart handed out on Valentine's Day. Love isn't some story you see on Hallmark, Hallmark Town where everything works out because it's all so gushy-gushy and wonderfully sweet. Love is about understanding that you're a human being and that you've been created by a God who knows you and a God who understands you and a God who understands what grace and mercy are about. Love is about accepting your relationship with God because if we do that, and we begin to extend mercy into the world, then what we do is we understand God better. We understand.
understand that we can love others without accept, without knowing that something's coming back, without expecting someone else to give us something. We don't give the gift just so we can get a gift. We give the gift for the joy of giving the gift. We love so that we can love others. But in our loving others, what we do is we grow to know God better. We grow to deepen our understanding. And we also grow to model that love to the rest of the world. That's why Jesus is telling this whole story. Guys, we've got to change the world. And we've got to understand what it means to love others. We don't judge. We don't condemn. We give generously and we forgive. That's how, what's what love looks like. That's what it means to love others. And if we'll do that, we'll understand the one who created us more because the one who created us more will fill us more. God's Spirit will be in us. The Holy Spirit will move through us. And if we can set an example out in the world to change the world by the way we act and the way we love, then the world might catch on to that. And then if we can do that and we understand God and the promise of God even better, then we as a church can set an example for other churches. Do you know there's a buzz in this city? I've heard it. I've heard it time and time again. Do you know, know who they're talking about? They're talking about this place. They're talking about the kindness that's coming from this place. They're talking about what it means to make a difference in the world. Why is that? Because not that we're perfect and not that we're better than anyone else, but we're willing to do what it takes to love others. To extend the opportunity of grace to others, the opportunity of mercy to others, because we want to extend kindness. Kindness in the form of loving one another. Kindness in the form of helping kids who need help in their schoolwork after school. Kindness of bringing the community together to share in entertainment and let their spirits be moved by music. Kindness of bringing high school athletes in here so that they can hear from men who've been there who can encourage them in their journey. Kindness of where we can go out into the community and make a difference in feeding people who are helping others. Kindness where we can go and we can count those who are homeless so that we know what kind of opportunities to offer them as a community in Paris, Texas. You see, First Christian Church is making a difference in the world, but we're just beginning. But don't let us dare expect anything in return. Because what we do is we understand we're loved by Jesus and we get the promise. But we have to learn not to judge one another sitting on the pew. We have to learn not to condemn one another sitting on the pew. We have to move forward as a community, loving those who are gathered with us in this place, loving those who come to us in this place, loving those who want to join the journey of kindness in this community. And we have to be examples of love. We have to pack it down, squish it down, share it real well, and invite people to hold out their aprons. And we want to be those people, those people who've been loved so much by God that we just scrape the heapings off. And we give them to everybody else with nothing expected in return. I want you to hear this what Eugene Peterson said. He says, this is the way we should love. Don't pick on people. Jump on their failures or criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. The hardiness can't boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life. You'll find life given back. But not merely given back. Given back with bonuses and blessings. Giving, giving, not getting is the way. Generosity begets generosity. We, the people of God, call to love because we've been loved. Let us go forth and love one another and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen.